Alright guys, uh, this is going to be part one of my new chicken coop. I'm going to convert my mom's old shed into a, a new chicken coop at my house. It's free. I like that kind. And it's 10 by 12. Mom had some hail damage to her roof and to the shed and the insurance guy said she gets a new shed, new roof. So, I put this thing together when I was about 15 years old. That would make it uh, 30 years old. What I'll do, I've got to take stuff, take my old coop down at my house. That's going to take me a little while and uh, rebuild this one. It's just be a little bit more weatherproof and easier to handle, uh, look a little nicer. And what I'm going to do is once I get it put up at the house, I'm going to put one by fairing strips all around it and I'll cover it in vinyl siding and then I'll get me a corrugated roof put over top of this rusty one make everything look nice it'll look all brand new when it's done and first I've got to clear everything out of here though and put in mom's garage I don't know if you see this it's kind of dark but we have your various assorted things so that's all going in the garage for now until I get her new shed and get it put up. But this will be part one and as it progresses, I'll keep posting videos. Bye y'all. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's part two of my chicken coop project and happy transit of Venus to everyone. It's going on right now. Can't look at it, it's too friggin' bright. Alright, this is what I'm going to do. This is the old shed I had in part one. Everything's labeled. I've got a bucket full of screws and nuts and bolts and just hundreds of them. You wouldn't believe it. Anyway, this is what's... Do you mind? This is what's coming down. This old junky looking thing. It's actually nice looking without the Tyvek and the uh, tarps on it. When I originally built this... It's got a nice roof and stuff, and I don't have chickens in here right now. Got them over on this other side. But all this is coming down. This is... Mitt, please, buddy. Thank you. And this is where I'm going to put it. I'm getting swarmed by wasps, of course. Thank you. So anyway, I just... When I get all that tore down, I'll make some more videos about putting this up. And then all the stuff I have in mind to turn into a chicken coop would be pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hey guys, this will be part three of my new chicken coop project. This is the old coop and I've got the all the framing for the roof and the wire and everything off of it now. I've got a pretty good size 12 by 12 space here the sheds gonna be 10 by 12 so I'm thinking I'm just gonna leave that back wall up put the back of the shed to that that'll keep a lot of the western sun off of it and you know storms usually come out of the west here so keep a lot of wind off of them and got this lattice work over here covered in Virginia creeper so that'll keep a lot of sun off of them and uh, you know it dies back in the winter time so that'll let some uh, sun on them to warm them up a little bit I think so yeah I think I just got to take this front wall where I had my door right here take you see it there you go uh, take these two two by fours out take the wire mesh out put some framing down for the shed build the shed and then uh, put the wiring back up and uh, put the doors to where the wire will be right next to the doors. That way, I keep a lot of the predators from trying to claw at all the metal and maybe bend them back some of the sheet metal of this old shed. And then on top of the shed, over top of the roof that it has, I'm going to put some fairing strips and probably put some corrugated fiberglass. And that will uh, keep, a, you know, it'll bounce some of the sun off and have a little airspace between it. And I'll put some fans in the coop. But that's the progress so far. 
Uh, my son's 21st birthday party is this weekend on, on Friday night. I'm going to Maker's Mark Saturday. My kids are taking me for Father's Day. Get to hand up a bottle, show off my ambassador card, all that good stuff. Get to visit my barrel. And uh, so maybe looking like Sunday, Father's Day, I'll be back out on this. And if I can scrounge up enough uh, money there, I'll buy some lumber and put me a floor frame in. Until uh, then, thanks guys. Hey guys, out here in lovely Ohio Valley weather, working on the chicken coop. You got four 12 foot 4x4s, pressure treated for base and uh, putting together my side floor frame rails for the shed. I got the front one assembled there. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a hot one today. It was 104 here yesterday. Which ain't as bad as Kansas, 118 degrees. Good Lord. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna get to work on this as much as I can out here. Glad I got this little pergola thing up over my head. But I'm gonna get this assembled, get some of this front wall here taken down, some of that wire mesh, and get all that in. And I will uh, keep bringing up clips as I progress. Hey, well, I'm here with Larry. He come by and help me finish up this framing. I got it all up off the ground now. You can see that. And got my rail set. Now I only got a couple of set screws in the rail. Because when you put the panels up, if you got the panels up, you start putting the roof on. They're all pre-drilled holes. And if just a little bit out of square, those holes won't line up. So you got to pull your set screws out and, you know, cattywampus it a little bit to the left or right or something until your roof panels line up and they're pre-made holes. And uh, this was a used shed, so like the bottom of this one was all dinged up and got my metal shed straightener tool assembly here and straightened all that up. Chickens look like they're almost dead, I think. What's the temperature today? 103? 103. 103 today? Not too bad. I've only lost 16 pounds so far since 10 o'clock this morning. I've been trying to drink water, but I sweat like a fucking fountain. And, uh, yeah, here's all. Whew. It's 6 o'clock in the evening. It's time to wrap up. Uh, the next thing to do is start putting the side panels up. But you can't start putting them up until you are ready to finish it. Because it, uh, you know, if the, we get a storm pop up or something, wind come up, it'll just rip it all down. So, looks like Fourth of July be my next day off. Looks like it'll go up Fourth of July. I'll be back with more progress then. See y'all. Thanks. Okay, it's going on 7 o'clock tonight. This is the third day I've been working on this. It took me two days on the foundation. And so far today, by myself, in 100 degree heat, I've gotten all the panels up, all the side rails, top rails, and one panel of roofing on each side. All I have is eight more panels of roof to go and the shed will be done and then I want to do something with this floor here I don't think I'm going to put plywood from the bottom of the shed to the bottom of the shed I'm going to put some posts going down and put my floor joist there that way when this thing's sitting flat on the ground I have to duck to get underneath the get through the door but with it raised up like this, you know, that's going to give me a good six, seven inches of clearance so I can come in, step right in, don't have to duck. None of these uh, roof beams are in my way. So, that'll be awesome. And I found we'll get my floor joist when I tear down my old coop over here. The rafters, two by sixes, are going to become the floor joist. So, yeah working it all right that's all i got for today folks 
and uh, just got to go to Litchfield tomorrow, visit my daughter, see her new house, and uh, go out to eat, so I don't know if I'll do anything to this tomorrow or not. My wife don't get home till 1 o'clock, I may come out here and try to put some roof panels on. Alright, see y'all. Well, the main structure of my chicken coop is done. Just got to put on the door trims and adjust these doors. That's 103 again today. I worked all day at work. And came home and got all the roof panels on. 10 by 12. Probably going to get dark in here. I don't know if it'll pick up or not. But, uh, yeah. Here I am at the back. And then fly strip. And here I am in the corner. I got plenty of headroom. Have to really reach up to even touch that. I guess the roof's about eight foot, the very top of the roof. About seven foot six to that beam. Now I just gotta figure out how to put my floor in. Get these edges secure so no predators can get in. And I'll be ready to order me some chickens. I'm gonna close her up tonight. We got storms in the area. Hopefully we get some rain. Get three hours of sleep last night. Start thunder and lightning. And man, lightning is crashing. I mean, just next to the house. The whole whole house is shaking and rattling and booming and time I start to doze off boom or come another one but anyway chicken coop is done Mick you mean bastard I hope you're happy you gonna be in a nice warm place this winter nice and dry no more mud on your feet hope you like it it's all for now guys just gotta put the guts in build my nest boxes and uh, perches and that kind of stuff and I'll be done. For now, see y'all. Okay, I finally got another weekend off. And uh, Saturday morning, the 14th of July. Got some family coming over later for a cookout. But I'm going to keep working while they're here. <laughs> uh, take down the old pergola here today. And I'm going to reclaim the wood and use it for the floor in the new coop. Some of these are a little bold. So what I'll do is just snap a line across them and uh, cut the bow part out, make it nice and level. And then underneath, I'm going to shore everything up, even though it is reclaimed wood. It's still in good shape. And uh, we've got hangers here I can reuse, all that good stuff. So yeah, it'll work out pretty good. Uh, come back well, guys, it's the end of the day. Got most of the pergola down. And I got about two thirds of the floor installed. And I gotta wait till tomorrow if my back holds up. Get some more wood off of this old thing. Finish out the floor. Then I can start the nest boxes. But till tomorrow, that's all I got. And my daughter and son in law. My grandbaby get ready to go back to Litchfield or Clarkson. Say bye bye. Bye bye. You blowing bubbles. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Mm. Bye. 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 Bye bye. <laughs> Well guys, here's my <clears throat> unplanted garden. I didn't plant one this year and I'm not sorry that I didn't. 
we've uh, had a drought record days over 100 degrees I don't have city water so I can't water everything as much as I like to when it's super hot next year I'm going container gardening on my deck but uh this is a Kentucky jungle and uh, if you don't cut mow or hike this is what happens here in Kentucky any place that's not paved will grow something and uh, so I was hiking away all this stuff up here in the garden which is next to my chicken coop so I could try to see the predators as they come and go and I found groundhog hole Look at that sucker. That's bigger than my leg. You can lose a baby in that. And uh, cleared out some. Used a sling blade or hand sickle, whatever you want to call it. Clear us out. I come over here along the fence. There's another groundhog den. Could be a raccoon den, but I have seen the groundhogs up here in the garden, so that's probably it. That first hole there probably connected to that other one and you come over here this is the groundhog or the uh, raccoon dining room I've got uh, stuff stock pallets and old tires and stuff along the back of the coop to keep anything from digging under it and uh, there's old natty light can old fly traps some chicken eggshells so I imagine this is where they grab something and come back here to eat. So I'm going to get me two more security cameras and a monitor from Harbor Freight. Put one out here and one in the coop. They have audio, the ones I have around the house. Got four of them around my house for security. They don't have audio. But I'll put one with audio in the chicken coop. That way if anything ever gets in with the new chicks, it will... Uh, It'll wake me up. I'll leave it on during the night and it'll wake me up. We got more hiking to do, but man, it's humid. Not as hot today, but it is humid. I was drenched just doing this a little bit. And still got more to go. Maybe another day, though. My last day of vacation. I ain't gonna waste it out here hiking on weeds. Got a drip system and everything out here. You find all that, dig it up so I can use it on my deck. But that's it for now, guys. Uh-oh, here comes Mick. I gotta go. He's gonna come and get me. See y'all. Here's the progress on the new coop. As you can see, I had to pack everything in here. We were supposed to get some really bad storms and high winds all last week, which we never did. But, you know, just a few miles from here they did. But I've got sheet metal, things like that that were laying in the driveway. I don't want blowing around, take somebody's head off, or fuck up a car. So, got to make my nest boxes, and I'll clear all this out. Nest boxes and a door, and it'll be ready to put my chickens in. They'll be a little safer at night. Here's my homemade trap. That old uh, animal cage here. And I don't know who I've seen it from on YouTube, but I've seen a video where he wired a bungee cord to the door, took a piece of wood, I already had a metal tray in the bottom, so I drilled a hole in the back of it there, tied that orange string to it, brought the string up here around the top, put a piece of wood dowel in the door, and if anything goes in there to get the peanut butter and dog food, it will push that plate down, which will release this pin from the door and the door slams shut. I've got two bungee cords on it which raccoon could chew through that in no time so hopefully I'll hear it. I left the windows and door open last night so I could uh, hear anything going on out here. And uh, I put some of this hardware cloth around it here so they couldn't just stick their hand in there and grab the food. And this is a snare trap. You got a snare in a bucket. And it is loaded with a bungee cord. The bungee cord's hooked to a block underneath the bucket. If you, it's barely hooked on there. If anything dis disturbs that bucket, bungee cord will shoot up 
in this uh, slip knot thing here will hopefully wrap its wrap around the hand or the head of a raccoon possum and hang it here from my chicken run. I've got to get in here and clean this chicken run up today too. Used to have a lot more chickens and they kept it all bare dirt and gravel. But since I only had three, now I only got two, they uh they don't wear it down like they used to. So get that cleared up so I can see more chickens. I mean see more predators. Get a better shot at them. Anyway, thanks guys. Hey guys. I went out to Lowe's today and got me some fairing strips. Put them on the front of the new chicken coop there. Got it all framed up. I put a vinyl siding, some J channel all up and around it. Some starter course holder thing there. There. Took the siding off of the old coop. Got it right there. And we're getting ready to start cutting it up. And before you know it, the whole front of this thing will be covered in vinyl siding and looking real nice. So there you go. I don't know the sun's not in the right area there, but say goodbye to the rusty old front of the shed. Alright guys, I'll be back when I get the vinyl siding on. And there it is. Got one more piece put at the top. You can already cut that, but it's getting ready to get dark. Sun's going down over there. And I want to get this in, but you see what it looked like all nasty old and rusty and now it's looks brand new. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. Guys, it's 80 degrees in the shade and I have had my metal shed I'm converting into the chicken coop uh, closed up for about 17-18 minutes now and got a thermometer in there. We're going to go in there and check the temperature. Now as you can see it is a bright sunny day and I did get all the siding finished last night. I've had these doors shut for about, now it's going on 19 minutes. And I've got a digital thermometer about six inches from the top of the roof in the back here. 131 degrees Fahrenheit. Right there's the temperature probe. So, it's a 51 degrees difference from the outside temperature. I had these doors off when I was doing the siding. Uh, right before I closed the shed up, the doors were off and it was, the top up here is 118 degrees with no, with the doors wide open without any doors on the building. So, I got to ventilate. I've got this thing. I don't know what it came off of. It says uh, not to be used to move heat or overcooking. So I don't know what it was. Maybe it was an air conditioner, mobile home, or trailer, or something. I don't know. But uh, it works real good. It pushes a lot of air. So I'm going to try to mount this actually in the floor, underneath the floor. Figure that'll be the coolest, dry spot. Uh, I got floor joists running under here. I'll mount it to that and then I'm going to build something that comes up out of a Luon quarter inch underlayment build a uh, ductwork and have the cool air from down underneath the shed blow up here to the top because if I put this probe down to the level where the door is the uh, that will drop to about 115 degrees uh, with the door closed, with the door open, it's about 100 degrees. So it's a lot cooler in the bottom than it is on the top. And uh, I'm going to cut some holes in here and put some vents in, in this eave here. So alright guys, I'll uh, probably be back after I get this here vented. And we'll check the temperature again sometime. Looks like it's 133 now, the door is open. Still 133. So yeah, I'm sweating, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Here's what I came up with. I didn't put the fan underneath the floor. I uh, took out some floor, put a 4x4 four four in there, bolted it to the floor joist, and then bolted the fan to that. That way it'll stay high and dry. Down here, it's getting dark. I don't know if you can see that. We've got hardware cloth, half-inch hardware cloth. Screwed in nice and tight. No critters can get up. And uh, 
the wiring on this is all just temporary for right now but this is going to get covered in Tyvek and then covered in quarter inch Luon and at the top here I'm going to cut a vent to blow the air out where the air is the hottest up there at the top of the shed it will blow it across the top of the shed and as you can see these sheds are built to ventilate so most of the air will just go out of the existing holes and down between the cracks in the floor that's the plan anyway and I'm going to have a separator between the fan the outlet of the fan here going across and then this will be like a separate chamber so it will only draw the air up out from the bottom where it's cooler and then it'll push it up here and out the top well more video when I get done the boy say hi Larry hi Larry big get a big chooch there he goes big chooch look at that alright I got the bottom half all tied back up and uh, got a separator from the fresh air from the bottom so it doesn't sit in the inside of this chamber here and just swirl around so it's pulling straight air out of the bottom underneath the chicken coop and getting ready to tie up the last part of it over there wrap it around and we'll see how good she blows well, hey guys uh, just want to show everybody I kind of tamed the temperature problem I had going on in the new chicken coop uh, per mobile tech I put a turbine up there and uh, it works really well it's not spinning there's not much of a breeze right now uh, just had a little rainstorm but did that and it took it down from about 130 to about 109 which was still too hot so I went and got some R13 insulation three and a half inches thick and uh, put me some structure up here that's ran some boards you know on a metal shed you've got the metal roof spine there and then you've got a metal uh, C beam there that goes down the sides both sides and uh, I just took these boards and tucked them into the lip there and then these come with uh, all kinds of holes pre-drilled in them so I just took a small screw and put through a hole and screwed them up there but yeah got my uh, circulation fan here bring cool air in it is uh, 82 degrees outside it's 84 degrees in here which isn't bad at all uh, it is cloudy right now but it was sun shining earlier and it didn't seem to uh, heat up very much it got up to 90 it was the hottest it got but it was a uh, 90 degrees outside so it was the same as the air temperature so anyway everything's pretty much done now still gotta put some bracing up like I did here on the uh, two outer edges I'm gonna have to screw a board into the side of the shed so I can have these uh, things here rest on them that would work pretty good got me a vinyl floor in here I'll put wood shavings down and uh, there's the hole for the vent or for the turbine she's just spinning a little bit now if I shut the door my fresh air fan right there it'll, it'll get that fan a spinner usually does anyway yeah there we go anyway chicks will be here the week of September the 11th hope I'm ready for them see you guys well how hot does a metal shed get it is 87 degrees outside partly cloudy sun's dipping in and out of clouds and now this shed which is going to be my chicken coop uh, it's a foot off the ground it's got free airflow under it We've got vinyl siding that I put over the metal on the front help block a little bit of heat and uh, mobile tech suggested I put a turbine up here so I did it's a rather large one too for the size here Got a hole cut in the roof, got it all foamed up. I've also got a fan that's inside of that box sucking cool air out from underneath the shed floor, bringing it up, blowing it out across the top. 
even with all that, it's 95 degrees. I'll get my head out of the way. There we go. 95 degrees. I got vinyl floor here for the for the chickens, make it easier to sweep in the process. But anyway, I'm gonna put a couple more. I'm gonna cut some holes out in the gable there, and uh, put some wire mesh in there to keep raccoons or whatever out. Let that vent some. And I am also going this roof. So hot you can't touch it. Uh, I'm gonna go up and get some insulation and I'm gonna put insulation on the roof. And hopefully that helps. But after I get that done, I'll be back to let you know the results. Oh, one more thing too. This is uh, that temperature 95, that's with this door being open all day so far. It's only about 1.30. But I might have to leave it closed when I get my chicks. Hopefully I can get to keep pulling up. This will be my, my broder. But uh, we'll see. Well, I took my temperature probe and stuck up here on the roof. You see how hot it was. So far we got 127. And it's been there for a minute now. I don't know if it's gonna climb anymore or not. But I'd imagine about two, three o'clock when the sun's directly over top of this thing, it's gonna be uh, gonna hit 130 so yeah we're gonna take care of that problem that's where all my heat is coming from hey guys the coop is ready to uh, accept my chicks when they get here in the mail in about 10 to 14 days now when you're getting day old chicks whether you're picking them up or you're uh, getting them mailed in or whatever you want to have everything completely ready to go you know the day before they get here uh, minimum uh, I've got everything ready to go now except uh, putting water in the in the water font and uh, food in so uh, here's what I've done made a little corral out of some scrap fencing I had and some uh, big roll of uh, brown craft paper I've had here forever so I just uh, kind of taped that up there it's about six seven feet across got the heat lamp there you got a regular light bulb there uh, you want to keep your chicks uh, very important uh, 95 to 90 degrees the first week of their life and then decrease it five degrees a week T hit 70 degrees or whatever the outside air temperature is uh, got the water and feeder cleaned out ready to go I've already got my chick feed here it's ready to be filled up you know put in there as soon as they get here I've got chick grit which is very important for them because they're not outside digging around like the uh, bigger chickens are and eating gravel and stuff like that I've got a bigger feeder ready to go and I've got a bigger water cleaned out ready to go too for when they're bigger uh, ready for that you want a little one for the little guys because they can get down inside of the big you know water font and uh, they could drown so this right here they can't drown in it they can hop in and out of it whatever just gotta clean it up every day uh, do that for a couple weeks so they'll be ready for the bigger ones but all this paper in this uh, little corral here that keeps them from catching a, a sideways draft and uh, that thing there I uh, still gotta get some buckets and put on there for my nest boxes but you know my chickens ain't gonna be laying eggs for another five months so I ain't too big a hurry for that get some extra shavings and I've got some uh, quick start that goes in the water. It's kind of like some sugar and some vitamins and stuff to help them rehydrate from their uh, flight here. Take them two or three days. And then uh, got some uh, quick grow too or whatever it's called that you spread on the food and it's got acidophilus and things like that in it to help their digestive systems get going. Give them a good uh, healthy start once they get here. And uh, having a crowd like this just keeps them all contained. Keeps the litter in one spot. Keeps them a little warmer. The drafts off of them. After uh, you know about three, four weeks maybe, where they start wanting to jump around, and get all racy on you, uh, then I'll just lift this up and uh, spread shavings throughout the whole coop area. But anyway, there it is, ready for my chicks. They should be in here uh, 10 to 14 days, ready for them. Thanks for watching, guys. What an awesome day! 
70 degrees, low humidity. My neighbor's house across the street. And my neighbor's house behind me. He's uh, giving me some metal roofing. He's taking down his barn there. And on the back side is uh, 16, 16 by 34 feet of red metal roof in awesome shape with all the hardware and everything. And I'll show you the view when I get up there. Well, I made it into the neighbor's yard. There's his dogs, a couple of labs. It's a Titan and Diesel. The black one's Diesel, the brown one's Titan. And uh, coming around the two barns here. There's my ladder. There's the view I got. What an awesome, awesome day. There's the roof I'm taking off. 34 by 16. We'll make something real neat out of it. For my family and for the chickens. <laughs> it's going to be a combined project. But he's tearing all this down, putting up a lean to from that building. That building, park all of his equipment under. But yeah. There's my view. See y'all. Alright guys, I'm up on the roof now. I'll show you the view up here. Sailboat off in the distance. My neighbor's yard. Awesome. Ain't too many better ways to spend a Saturday. screws well I got all of it but four sheets and it's lunchtime we'll run over to the house eat some lunch there's my house way over there somehow or another I get all this metal way over there I guess I'll carry it one or two sheets at a time toss it over the fence and then pick it up and carry it the rest of the way all right, much time. Well, guys, we got it over here. Uh, it's 11 pieces, 11 and then a cut piece. Three foot wide, it's about 540 square feet, I think. Whew, out of breath. We just had to push this thing up. <laughs> Me and the wife balanced this uh, old lawn tractor wagon here. These things 16 foot. We pushed them all the way up the driveway all the way around there's the you see the green roof over there the building and then the, the barn is uh, next to that and uh we pushed it down the road and up the driveway jesus christ i think i almost killed my wife come well, on i'm gonna go in here and drink some water see y'all well i'm gonna be tearing down the coop uh, the old coop and the old run here in the next few days <clears throat> got some nice weather so yeah but uh, yeah, this is just ugly as all get out. And you know, most uh, backyard chicken people, they uh, you know hobble together something or whatever and they put it up and you know, over time you figure out things that do work, things that don't work. Uh, for instance, you know, I put the run on the front of the big coop here and the nest boxes are in there. So every day I had to go through the run uh, into the coop, the coop's roof leaked, uh, had all kinds of problems. It's just a muddy mess and then uh yeah it just didn't work out so you can see here i'm already got some of the wire off i'm gonna get all the wire off today and get this run down <clears throat> maybe try to get some of the old coop apart i ain't gonna work too hard today it's still a little wore out from the metal roofing yesterday but anyway we're gonna get this all cleaned up and this will all be rebuilt to where there won't be a coop back there it'll just be one big run and then uh, I'm going to have a roof over part of the run. And so it'll, they'll have a dry spot so they enter the the coop there and uh, lay their eggs and go in there at night. Or if they want to spend the night out in the run, they can do that too. And the roof will be over it and it'll keep them dry. And, and uh, it'll be predator proof. I assure you that. 
So anyway, it'll look real nice, and uh, until I get some more progress uh, on this, I'll be uh, getting back to work. See ya. Yeah, got all the old run tore down. I think I'm about done for the day. Go and rest up a bit again. May come out and try to unscrew some of those deck boards off that old coop. But, got her done. Well, my chicks have arrived. Not like they were supposed to. They were uh, supposed to call me at 5 o'clock in the morning when they reached the post office. And have me come pick them up. I kept checking the tracking number and everything and for the last couple days. Excuse me, I'm a little out of breath. I just walked up the hill from the mailbox. And, uh, didn't get a call this morning, so I figured they're coming tomorrow morning. I get to work, I eat lunch, I check the tracking number again, and it says they've been delivered. So I called the post office. I said, why didn't you call me? He said, we did, but it said the number was out of service. Well, this is my work phone, uh, my business phone. It's working fine. I've been getting calls all day. And, uh, so I said, well, nobody was home. What'd you do with them? He said, well, we just put them in your open garage. There's stray cats living in the garage. So I raced home. Luckily, the cats ain't gotten to them yet. And, uh, got them in the house, opened them all up. I uh, had one dead one. Looks like a silver laced wine dot. And I'm going to have to identify all these other ones. The yellow ones are white rocks and something else not sure but have to get my catalog and look at the pictures of the chicks and figure out what everything is and see what my mystery chick is so, uh, Murray McMurray adds a uh, one rare mystery chick which will probably turn out to be a rooster it's probably what they do with most of the roosters well not most of them most of them probably go in the garbage but anyway the chicks are here they seem to be fine they're eating they're drinking we keep wanting to jump over the board here. I've got them separated from the shavings because it says they may want to eat the shavings uh, before they figure out what food is. So you're supposed to put a little food on the ground around the feeder. and they, that's, So they're all eating really well. Got vitamin stuff. Uh, quick chick start in the water over there. That's why it looks yellow. Which is uh, mostly just, uh, I think, sugar and vitamins. Gives them a little energy boost from the ride over. And they think I'm mama already. I picked them all out one at a time, checked their rumps, make sure they weren't pasted up. And uh, sometimes when they see me, they want to jump over and run to me, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to count them, figure out what they all are, and I'll let y'all know later. Thanks for watching. Well, I've been checking my tracking number for my chicks that are coming in. And uh, ate lunch at work and checked the tracking number again, and it said delivered. So I called my local post office where they're supposed to be, and he said nobody, uh, he said the phone number they called said it was out of order this morning. Well, that's my work phone. And it's not out of order. They dialed a the wrong number or something. I said, well, where are they? He said, well, nobody answered the door. Well, because nobody's home. So they left them in my open garage where uh, two stray cats live. So I got a hold of my son. He went home. He found them. Uh, cats hadn't got a hold of them yet, but it was 60 some degrees this morning out there in the garage And I'm racing home here to make sure they're all right get them in their broder So uh, hopefully everything's good and I'll let you know as soon as I get home I've arrived home and they seem to all be okay. Haven't opened the lid yet. Lots of chirping. I don't know if all of them's okay, but we'll see Got the water set up for them out in a brooder and uh Food ready to go. You ready to open her up? Take them outside. Well, he's got one dead one. Looks like the others are probably okay. Poor little guy. Come on, buddy. I'm gonna get you over here. Dip you in some little water. Come on, fellas. One at a time. Easy now. 
some water. Dip them all. I'm going to dip all these in the water and then uh, let you know how it goes. Well, I think the, some of the little girls here think I'm their mama already. They keep wanting to jump over the little board into the shavings where I'm sitting. I don't want them eating the shavings yet, so I cleared that out of the way. Aren't they cute? Chicken can. Well, good. We'll uh, check back later and see how they're doing. Still got the one dead one. Have to look at my book and see which one, which kind it is. Hey guys, uh, last Tuesday was the one week birthday of my chicks. Today's Thursday, so they're a week and two or three days old. And it's starting to look like little velociraptors. When they uh, buck up against each other, they kind of spar off, there goes a couple. They hold their necks real straight and throw their chest out and come at each other look like something out of Jurassic Park. But uh, <clears throat> I've been feeding them with a little quart mason jar feeder and a little quart mason jar water. And it's becoming a pain in the butt because I get up in the morning and both of them's empty. So I fill them up before I go to work. Come home from work, both of them's empty. i got to fill them back up. And uh, sometimes they'll even have the feed emptied out by the time I go to bed again. And uh, you want your little chicks especially to always have food and water. Never let them go without. Now my my bigger chickens, uh, I just throw some food out to them in the morning. Throw some food out to them when I get home. And then they're out free ranging during the day. So I don't have to always worry about them having food out. But I always do keep water out for them. You never want to let a chicken go more than a couple hours without water available if they need it, especially hens. Uh, a few hours without water and they may not lay for three or four days. So anyway, I'm hanging up my, I got a gallon font here, water, and uh, got a uh, 25 pound, or a 12, 12 pound feeder. So that are to hold them for, you know, day and a half, two days before I have to come out here and keep changing it out. They're sprouting more feathers on their wings. The feathers are keep going higher and higher up towards the shoulder. And I'd imagine pretty soon, yep, some of them starting to get a little feather on their tail there. So anyway, they're coming along real good. Only had the first uh, that first day, two of them died, and uh, that was it. So I've got 35 of them here. More updates as uh, they develop. Thanks for watching, guys. See y'all later. Well. Got a request uh, from Redneck Trucker 1969 to uh, do a chicken update. The chicks are six weeks old now, and got the I played hooky from work today. I was feeling kind of crummy when I woke up and uh, sinus infection or something. It's it's allergy uh, territory here in the Ohio Valley. But anyway, kind of holding my hand over the <clears throat> camera here. Sun's over here to the, in front to the upper left. I don't want to get a glare. Well, I got the doors open on the coop today and I uh, put this piece of sheet metal up here. Took some pilasters and uh, screwed three of them, one on each end, one in the middle. And opened up the door to the coop so like it's 82 degrees today, October the 23rd. And opened the doors up so they can come out. I did this one other time and then I came out and uh, so far it's been open an hour and a half or so and they won't come out. That's why they call them chickens. They're, they're chicken. But 
Yep, they're doing well. I did lose one last week. Came home and one of the silver laced wine dots were deceased. Don't know why I'm trying to get in here. So I'll show you the. Hang on a second. Okay, I got this piece of sheet metal here where I can slide it so I can get in and out. And it just uh, attaches to there. Had to stop the camera dog, couldn't do it for a But let's take a peek inside the coop if the camera will pick it up. Here's the chickens. Here's the Americruz. You see the tufts of uh, feathers coming out from under their eyes. That kind of buff and white one there. And a few others. But I put two little, oops, two little roosts in there. Got their feeder going. Water are going. But they seem to be doing pretty well. Six weeks old today. Whoop. Get a little feisty. Six weeks old today. They're doing really well. Seem to be. Still ways to go before they start laying eggs. They're pretty much feathered out. So I think I have, let's see, 37, I was three, I, got, I have 34 of them in here. And then I got this side over here where my adult hen, she can go at night. It's fenced off from there. She's got a little water and stuff, but she never hardly drinks out of it since she's out running loose during the day. Like these here will be, <clears throat> make it big enough. But that is the chicken update for this week. Hope y'all doing good. See ya. Well, I finally got most of them out of the coop. <clears throat> and, uh, hey, go in there and put some fresh litter down. They, uh, stuck the food out here and a couple of them jumped out. And the rest of them followed. But there was about five or six of them in there that just didn't want to do it. So I got cleaned out, got the food back in there. Now I got to get these back into the coop. Be like herding cats. And old mama over here, she's pissed. She wants them. She wants to get at them. She's sticking her head through the fence trying to grab them. Yeah, I can't leave them alone out here. I'm afraid she'll jump up on top of the fence, come on over and tear into them. So they're a little bigger and fend for themselves. I'll mix her in with them. Then maybe she'll be outnumbered and won't be such a bully. They're just pacing back and forth. Once, uh, chicken update. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Seven weeks old. He started when he was six weeks old. Unbelievable. Gonna do it again. Do it again. No. And he is the reason I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing this today. Laying out some roof trusses here. I'm going to build me a few trusses for the new Ryan. Which will be right here. Bought some 4x4 post. Treat it. Get me some ease here built up. Get my holes dug and get the roof on. Get it fenced in. And there he's crowing again. Anyway, that's my deal for the day. See how that bottom board is more darker than the other ones? Same with that bottom board, that top board. That was my pattern. That was the mock-up that I made two days ago it rained all day yesterday it was nasty and I didn't get home to work till it was almost till it was dark so but uh they, they, they were out in the sun uh, just a cloudy day yesterday and then some sunshine today that's how fast the sun will turn wood a different color sell so wood floors and tiger wood Brazilian cherry uh, man that stuff you expose it to light for 24 hours and it gets twice as dark anyway be back when these are finished.
Well, guys, the uh, wind's picked up here a little bit. Sorry if it's a little wind buffer on the mic, but I got my five trusses done. I still may put a uh, another cross member there and on the other side of the centerpiece. But uh, yeah, I designed these so that I usually have to do this stuff alone. My wife's going to see a friend in the hospital today. So on the end trusses, I left these here, these center pieces come down further. So when I've got my four by four post in the ground and I put my skirt board, you know, my upper skirt board up there, my header, uh, I can screw this on one end. I can screw it to that cross board and it'll keep the truss upright for me. And I won't need any help, nobody holding it up. And I put this one on the other end. Then I can run a, string or uh, some uh, fern strip from one end to the other then set my center pieces in and uh, mark them and nail them up so got that done today now I gotta get some water and dig some post holes hey guys well got a fine looking flock here all doing really well one laying in the sun and uh, keeps doing well Got some simple roof trusses here made and uh, got the rest of the lumber there and there and I'm gonna start digging the holes and putting my chicken run and roof up here today it's nice about 60 degrees out here it's sunny they're loving it Some of them pretty friendly. Don't seem to mind me too much. Walk in there with them, they don't all scatter anyway. Anyway, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Get on this run. Well guys, it's day two on the new run. And uh, yesterday I got my post holes dug. Got the post in there. Don't have concrete in it yet. I'm gonna get it all squared up. Them roof panels, you know, they don't flex. You can't adjust them like you do shingles or metal roof panels. So you gotta, thing has to be perfectly square. So I'm gonna get my uh, rafters put up there and then uh, cut my panels and uh, get them set on there and make sure everything lines up good and square. Left enough room in the holes that I can, you know, move everything around a little bit. And then I get my panels on and I'll concrete up the holes. But I plan on getting the, all the trusses up today. Hopefully the panels cut and put on. And I don't know, you know, it's dark at six o'clock, so we'll see. Well guys, here's what I got so far. Got about 30 minutes of daylight left. And I got all my trusses up. And I got three panels on that side. I've got three panels for this side cut. Don't look like I'm gonna get too much more done today. I may uh, take it to stabilizing two before they're off and I don't know. I may leave it on to screw everything down good. I gotta work tomorrow. That ain't too bad of a day for working by yourself. Good Lord, I've never been up and down a ladder so many times. Between the ladder and then the deck to cut stuff. Oh, it's, by yourself it's a pain in the butt but anyway there's the exposed side but I will have have this done this week if I can get a little time off work for it gets dark and uh, yeah see y'all then all right guys got all the roof on now and uh, Everything's pretty much set. Putting the skirt board boards on now. And I'll put a, I guess it's an apron board or something across the middle. Measuring out for my door. Got me a door. Treated lumber. But uh, should get this all wrapped up this weekend, other than gutters and some, uh, you know, uh, cosmetic stuff. I'm gonna figure out something to do on the front gable here. Want to do something neat? I don't know yet. Looking on the internet, get ideas. 
not very creative. Anyway, anyway, be back when it's done. All right, guys. Uh, whole weekend's worth of work is done. I got it all fenced in. I got my stuff trimmed off up there. Some more things secure. And uh, yeah, I did this uh, black fencing. Black, uh, it's welded wire. Uh, black vinyl coated or PVC coated. And that thing looks pretty cool, pretty cool. And I uh, just got to level out the ground now, bring some more dirt in. We got all my post holes uh, filled in. Let's see, 160 to 320 pounds of concrete bag per hole. And the only thing left now is to put a fascia board on and the guttering. Put a gutter up here on the run roof and another gutter on the uh, coop shed here so that uh, all this will stay good and dry. And then I'll put some more of that welded wire from here down to underneath wherever the gutter is I'll run a board along there and nail that in that'll be predator proof got all the little bitty spots all tucked up and fenced off no way for anything to get in or out except for little bitty Mises and stuff like that and I just got to figure out what to do with the gables now. The front and rear of the building. I don't know, I may do some vinyl siding. I may do T11. I don't know. I'm going to make it look decorative. But there it is. 12 by 12 run. 12 by 12 coop. And then there's going to be eventually another... 12 by 12 open air run which will be built just like this but without the roof I'll substitute this black fencing for the roof all right thanks for watching guys and uh till the next one see ya well here's some better pictures of the new run it was dark the other night when I got finished and uh set this door here so you can see what it looks like all buttoned up I like that black fence, it kind of disappears. I'm gonna let this uh, pressure treated wood age for a few weeks. And then uh, the next warm spell we have, I may stain it or just seal it. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I hate hate putting wood stain on it. It just, uh, you know, it looks bad after a while, I don't know. But here's how I did my wire put it on the inside of the boards instead of on the face I think it made it look a lot cleaner I just have to cut a hole in the side of the coop so all the youngins can come out during the day and be safe I just got home from work sun setting over there and we're gonna clean out the coop I got it sectioned off here where my older chicken she can uh, be in here by herself and she won't try to kill all the other ones and there's her little poop pile under a perch. I'll leave that open during the day. Maybe these guys locked up. Here they are. Probably nice and hungry. Looks like they just got a little fine left in the bottom. And looks like they may need some water. I'm going to get all the coop poop scraped out and put away and put some new shavings in here for them. I got new water that don't leak now so that will keep that ammonia smell down before my old waters they just leak out the bottom when you hang them uh, but this double walled one it won't do that so anyway here's the here's the chickies here's my my rooster how you doing there see the sideburns he's americana he got sideburns i think i may call him van buren and him and the other one have marks they're losing feathers around their tail I don't know what's doing that. I don't know if they got mites or if somebody's picking on them. But uh, him and one of the hens of the same species, the Americana, or Maracruz, 
they uh, they're losing feathers on their tail. Let's see what's going on with that. Hey, honey, how you doing? How you all doing? Silver lace wine dot. She's pretty. White rock. Alrighty, I'm gonna get to clean this out. Ah, oh, jeez. It's a pissy ass Saturday. And I'm out here doing downspouts on the gutters. Here's the gutter. And, uh, here's the door I made in the side of the coop finally. It's all framed up real nice on the inside, so this is all good and sturdy, and I don't think anything can pull that apart. The door here flips up. Goes around it. D-ring goes there. Open it up, and they come out. And, uh, got a gutter put on the side of the shed here. The uh, run overlaps it. I'll just let the water run onto the shed. And still got to seal it. I had to put a seam in here. They only had 10 foot gutters. And where I put my down, my drop on the end here, it, uh, it's just pissing out there. But hopefully it'll quit raining sometime today. Get some more done. Get that cap on up there at the top today. It quits raining. And I have to, uh, Go see uh, a Christmas Carol at uh, Actors Theater in Louisville tonight. It's like our third or fourth year we've been to see it. It's pretty cool. Drink a little whiskey, watch the show. Anyway, signing off from rainy Louisville, Kentucky. See ya. Okay, I've opened up the barrier between them. Here they come. See how long it takes her to notice. Hey, Miss Chick 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 Chicken. Chick, 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 Hope we don't pick up nothing bad to eat because might have some little bits of metal or something out here from drilling, but oh, I think she's taking notice. But I gotta get to work, guys. I gotta get the back gable on too. I'm just gonna use old decking for that since you can't see it uh, from the yard or the road or anything. I think it turned out real nice there. Yep, they're out here. We'll see what happens. Oh, and we're leghorns, pearl white leghorns, uh, real light body bird. Man, she could fly. She took off from over here, flew about 10 feet high, and landed over by that. Kia Sportage over there and uh, I just opened up the gate she walked right back in but man she I've never seen whoop there they go she's uh checking them out she's got to tell who tell them who's boss she's on top of the pecking order and that's just the way it is you better run buddy yeah it'll be a little traumatic today we'll see how see what goes on yeah, you better get over here and mingle. Let her spread that hate around. <laughs> uh oh. Don't get too close. Pick up all this mess out here today, too. It's been raining for three or four days. Just let them know. Got a big, mean, heavy beak on her, too. She's walking up to whoever she can just hit and just. That's the old one. The one doing all the pecking. She's letting them know she's on top of the order. Yeah, it's a lot of time. Got some pecking going on there. Oh, well, we'll see how it goes. Well, I decided what to do with the gable. Uh, Home Depot had some 
cedar board fencing. Uh, Two dollars and six cents a piece. They're five and a half inches wide, six foot long. So I bought twelve of them, and I think I may have one left over when I'm done. I think that looks good. That cedar up there. I'll put some Thompsons on it, and the Thompsons lets it uh naturally gray with age, like it normally would. But yeah, I'm gonna finish that up today. Get my cap on. We're going to play Board of Education. I'm going to integrate some uh, chickens, some different chicken species. We got Mama Chicken over here. She's the big bully. So I'm going to open up this little gate, let these chickens in here, and let the feathers fall where they may. So we'll see how that goes. Well, there we go. I finally got the cedar on the front. Got the wife cleaning out the coop. We're going to take that vinyl floor I had in there out. It just absorbs water and holds it, makes it stink. So I got old decking it out on the floor. It's uh, It's got some little quarter inch gaps in it, so I already get some more ventilation, keep it drier, keep the chickens happier. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Looks pretty good. I got to put my metal trim around the top edges. And uh, here's my hired help. But chickens are everywhere. Chickens all over the place. All right, thanks for watching guys. I'm gonna get back to work. Okay, I got the trim on the front. And I got my uh, cap on the top. No more raining into the middle of the coop or run. There's my cap. I got like two foot, two foot section left. I gotta go on the other side here and plug that up. But yeah. We're going to be watertight by the end of the day. Put my back on here. And uh, chickens are still not fully mixed. She's kind of avoiding them now after she's been tormenting them for the last couple of hours. She's kind of being on her own. These guys are just figuring out what the hell is going on. But yeah, that little one, that's the little one that flies. She's about 10 foot high, 30 foot long. All right, guys, it's break time. Okay, I put this stuff on one of my chickens the other day that was getting pecked around her tail, and it seemed to work really well. It's a Rooster Booster Pick No More Cover-Up Lotion. And uh, reduces cannibalism and pecking. And you just got to kind of grab the chicken, pop the top, smear it on wherever they're pecking at, and uh, believe me, the other chickens, they get a whiff of it, and they don't want any more. It's a cross between camphor, eucalyptus, uh, some sort of death fruit. I don't know. But it is some powerful stuff. It, one drop got on my jacket uh, four days ago. I still smell it. I mean, it was a little tiny dab. Anyway, I only got two or three chickens that are getting pecked on, so... I'm going to come in here and cause a ruckus. See if I can't grab one. See what's going on. There's Van Buren. Got the anti pick on his tail feathers there. I don't know if you can pick up that purple color. But they're definitely leaving him alone now. And wear gloves. I wore some uh, surgical gloves. If this stuff gets on your skin, you can wash your hands for three days straight. You'll still smell it. It's not a you know, an awful odor. It's just a kind of medicinal. I'm spreading some hay out here for them now, and they're all getting a kick, scratching and pecking through it. But it will, uh, you know, get any water in here to keep my feet from getting muddy every time I come in to feed them or water. What do you think, Van Buren? What do you think, buddy? like it stuff a couple of chickens are getting pretty friendly they'll come up to me Rhode Island Reds mostly I think she's one there <laughs> a pretty one silver lace wine dot she was getting picked on before and uh, put that on her last week 
Looks like she's already got some small feathers growing back in. I thought they didn't uh, grow any till they molted. I don't know. Well, thanks to Loretta on my Facebook uh, group page, uh, Backyard Chickens, I'm going to try the deep bedding method. And that is to uh, put quite a bit of straw in, let the chickens root and poop and do all that good stuff for a little while. And when that straw starts to get a little matted up, you uh, top it off with some more fresh straw. So this is the second layer of fresh straw. It's a uh, 10 by 12 shed here. So this is the first layer was one whole bell of straw and this one here is one whole bell of straw. And I just tossed a little cracked corn down here and they're all digging through it and rooting and that'll help. Uh, this is supposed to uh, maintain pretty good bedding, pretty healthy. Uh, you know, after six months to a year, you'll have some good compost in the bottom. And uh, shovel it all out then. Leave a little bit as a uh, starter for the next uh, fresh layer of hay or straw you put on it. And I've heard not to use hay, that it molds quite easily and uh, has a lot of dust and, and all kinds of stuff. So straw is supposed to be better. I don't, I don't know, but that's what I've heard, so that's what I'm doing. And uh, chickens seem to be happy. Half of them's out there. Now my shed is a little bit too small for how many chickens I got, but here in another couple months it will be, this will just be mostly where they come in to uh, lay eggs and, and sleep. And uh, it doesn't have to be real large for when they, they roost at night. I'm going to have roosts all across here so everybody's got a spot. And uh, most of the time they'll be out in their run and then they'll be out in the garden area that I'm going to fence in about a 25 by 60 or so. And then when they get a little bit bigger than that and they quit flying as much, I'll open up the entire half acre backyard to them. I just share a fence with a guy who's got three dogs, uh, two of them's labs. And if one of the chickens flies over the fence, you know, it's fair game. It's, uh, they're going down. <laughs> so uh, that's what those dogs do. They chase rabbits, squirrels, and birds all day long. Uh, so uh, once they uh, get to where they won't fly over the fence, I'll let them have the whole backyard. But for now, they're happy and cozy in here and out there in their run. You see I threw some scratch out there. They're all out there scratching and pecking around. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Bye. Merry Christmas. Hey, I just want to say there's a new contest coming soon, 900 subscriber contest. I hit it the other day. And quick update, we got a couple inches of snow overnight. And today was going to be cleanup and beautification day. But not now. Been sick since uh, Thursday night. Missed work yesterday. Uh, respiratory something, cough and aches. A little better today, but still ain't we get out here in this mess and do anything. Chickens don't seem to mind the snow. Of course, they don't have none in here, but... Seem to be enjoying themselves. Taking it easy today, which is what I'm getting ready to go do. Uh... Details on the contest coming soon guys as soon as I feel like doing a video Bye Well, I got me some five gallon buckets. I'm gonna make some nest boxes. I've got this old carpet sample rack uh, From our store took the uh, carpet sample cards out of it And it has a, a bar going across the bottom there I prop the buckets up on it, and I'm just gonna screw them into the back of it and then uh, I think right here I'm gonna screw some two by fours out to the front edge of the bucket on both sides and then I'm going to take uh, one by six and run it across so they have a little spot to grab when they jump up and it'll help hold the uh, the bedding in or the it's awfully slick I may get some carpet and uh, put some carpet in there so they got something to grip on or I may cut some boards and put in the bottom 
but that's what I got so far. I'm getting ready to drill the uh, drill the pilot holes and then uh, screw it into the back, and I'll come back when I got some more finished. All right, guys, I'm finished. Other than uh, packing some hay or something in there or some carpet, but uh, what I did was put a couple of two by fours on each side, one a little bit shorter than the other. I screwed the uh, buckets into the wall. And then I made this board flush with the front of the buckets and uh, put me old one by six piece of decking up there and then I put another two by four on each side down a little lower for a little little roost or a little hopping perch to get up in there and uh, on the top because the buckets are so slick I don't want them climbing up there and then getting a leg jammed down between them and hurting herself so I just took some old decking and Put some little uh, pilasters cut to fit to hold them together and screwed it down and there we go there's my new nest boxes i'll get some hay in the morning and uh hopefully start getting some eggs in there pretty soon uh sorry for being out of breath guys it's it's warm out here today and i've had this respirator on oh yeah this is the one i bought it's a uh, home depot it's the uh, p100 filters there 3m it was 25 bucks it does a great job with the all the chicken dust and everything in here but it doesn't do anything at all for vapor so if there's any you know ammonia smell that still comes through and that can uh, irritate your throat or something but other than that works great for the dust so uh thanks for watching guys there's my nest boxes and hopefully be getting some eggs soon thanks Well, finally a day when I'm home all day and it's not raining or a muddy mess and uh, doing the beautification, you know, got my coop and run done and it's been a mess. Whoop! just missed that. Chicken just flew into the fence. You okay, girl? You all right? A little day. But uh, I'm out here cleaning up and it's just, uh, you know, it's been six months maybe nine months total work and finally got a chance to do some cleanup got the burn barrel going and uh, got them running loose here and they're loving it it's warm there's all kinds of worms coming up to the top and I'm picking up rocks and blocks and wood and there's worms underneath there and they're real slow because it's still cool out here and this is gonna be shakiest on my new iPhone 4 so I don't know yet how to steady this thing <laughs> so I will learn though and there's just a little chicken update for today she's a pile of the old hay that I took out of the coop hopefully they'll dig it around and spread it around and get compost up still got more wood to move this is all my old coop and run Mow tomato cages and got to cut my grass down there and get that ready for spring. I'll do something with the canna patch over there. But yeah, we're going to beautify this place up here so that it looks real nice. Got to replace that fence. And I'm actually going to move. I got a fence right here by the driveway and I'm going to move this fence. And this gate opens all the way up this way to where the burn barrel is. So I'm going to replace that with a nice looking fence and uh, put it straight across here so I can get my, part of my driveway back. But i got to bust up some concrete, put the post in. Anyway guys, i got a sneeze coming on and uh, that's it for today. Thanks. don't like me. Quit pecking at me. Quit pecking at me. What is your problem? Can't you be nice? Even Mr. Rooster ain't that mean. There's the 
Oh, girl. Try to steal my wedding ring. Hey, guys. Well, the cycle's complete. Got my first white egg last week, and I got my first green egg a couple of days ago. So now I'm getting brown, white, and green uh, eggs. Some of the green eggs may be a little more blue tint. Usually they're mostly green though, I think. And uh, from what I understand, there's only two true colors of eggshell. That is white and blue or green. Uh, the color is all the way through the eggshell, whereas the uh, brown eggs, the brown is a layer over a white shell. Anyway, just want to show everybody. Thanks guys. Little tip for you backyard chicken farmers. If you have to, uh, if you don't have a truck, you got to haul bell of hay or anything, get you some of this cheap painter's drop cloth plastic. They're about probably 50 cents each or less. You three pack or four pack, it's like two bucks. But wrap your straw up because when the straw gets in the uh, carpeting, it is a pain in the butt to get out. And if you put it in your trunk, that, that trunk carpet, uh, it gets stuck down inside of there and it never comes out. Vacuum cleaner won't get it. You got to pick each little piece by hand. But uh, yeah, I, I just reuse this plastic. I put it up when I'm done and reuse it. Anyway, there's a little tip. Getting ready to clean out the coop today. And I'm going to go in here and see if i got any eggs in my uh, nest bucket. N bucket nest that I'm at. Well, yep, there's some chickens in here. And yep, we got a hen in the nest bucket there. Get back. Stay in there. Look at her. Oh, she's getting mad. She's picking that straw and throwing it around. There's one up there. But uh, I'm going to clean this up today. Get all this old hay out and put it in the garden. And uh, put me some nest buckets in the corners. Because they like to lay the eggs in the corners sometimes. And uh, they get dirty. When they're in the nest boxes, they stay nice and clean. I don't have to wash the eggs. So, anyway... I'm going to get busy cleaning this up, get them some fresh hay in here, and uh, they'll be happy chickens. Get back. Well, I got my hay fork, I'm getting ready to clean out the coop, and uh chicken got out of her box there. There's two eggs in that one, and one egg in that one. None in there. There's three eggs back here in the corner. Looks like one of them might be green, could be white. That's all I'm gonna see right now. I'm gonna get all this cap of poop out of here. But uh, yeah, when they lay them on the ground back there like that, they get dirty. When they're in the nest boxes, they're nice and clean. Anyway, I'll show you what the coop looks like cleaned out.